Wow. Well, hello. Let me start by saying that I am not a scientist, nor do I carry a degree in neuroscience or in, um, in anything related to, to the medical field. Thank God. I am, however, I am, however, a human interested in the behavior of other humans and of my, of my own. I'm so sorry. Okay. I am, however, a human interested in the behavior of other humans and of my own behavior. This came from a very simple um, start of my life. My career, for example, is in marketing and advertising, and I am in the business of persuasion. Also, I am into um, looking into other behaviors and of my own. I had a very troublesome teenage years. My family can tell you a lot about that. However, what came out of this is that something was wrong. My behavior was wrong. What was related to that behavior that I need to look at? Just um, a year ago, Mr. David Brooks, who is a cultural and political commentator who writes for the New York Times, stood upon exactly an audience like you in TED and said, when Freud discovered his sense of the unconsciousness, it had the vast effect on the climate of the times. Now we are discovering more accurate vision of unconscious, of how we are deep inside, and it's going to have a wonderful and profound and humanizing experience and effect on our culture. From that, we want to understand something very, um, very particular, which is Freud's theory of the human mind. He said that there's a mental iceberg. This mental iceberg, te iceberg tells us that what we see in the human is the conscious level, which is the tip of the iceberg, the thoughts and everything. Deeper is the pre-conscious level, and into the deep end is the unconscious level. What we don't know is that all of these realms all together work together to give, it, to give me behavior. But inside, from, from deep within, unconsciousness takes over all the time. We are, in fact, living in a delusion. We live in a delusional world, world where we walk around um, on autoplay all the time. So we take purchase decisions upon that. We, uh, we think that our conscious mind is in control. We think that it's driving behavior. We think that purchase is also a conscious decision, but all reality is exactly the opposite of, of what, um, what we think is. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna forget this one. Okay, um, at one point, I wanna tell you something that probably you don't know, and I'm gonna add some value to you. There are two terms I'm gonna use today. First is called the reptilian, and the second is the cortex. The cortex is what your conscious mind is all about, and the reptilian is what your unconscious mind is all about. Um, Dr. Coltier Rappel at one point said that the reptilian always wins, all the time. Don't tell me what's going on. Don't tell me, don't argue with me that reptilian always wins. So that means my unconscious mind always wins. Let's demonstrate. Let's have a very simple game going on with us. Please join me in that game. I want you to take your right leg and circle it, making a circle. Just your right leg going around, making a circle. The, the seats are actually designed for you to do this exercise, so just don't slack off. Go ahead, I'm a teacher at the end of the day. Okay, so the right, the right foot doing a circle. Now, in the middle of that, please draw the number six with your right hand. One of two happened. Either the circle, your foot stopped completely, or it went against the clock, uh, the clock uh, wise, which means that you could not go any further because it took over completely. Your unconsciousness took over completely. From that sense, I can, um, can I have the slides back, please? Okay. From that sense, I want to tell you how the research is happening, how research methods are happening today. 
What happens today is that we get a group of people, probably most of you or some of you went through that. We put you in a room, white room, fluorescent lights, and we tell you that we're going to ask you questions. Please be yourself. We're not going to ask anything more than that. Okay. Um, we're not, we just want you to be yourselves. However, in the context of that room, there's a, a wall that is two-way mirror, and it's, it's exactly like an interrogation. So people who are interested in what you say are behind the wall, which are the company, okay? And the moderator is sitting there, looking at, the, at those people, asking them questions, interrogating them, and he also has to look into the, the questions from the other room. In that context, you will get nothing from those respondents. The problem is we as marketeers take those inf this information and we transform it to products. We give you products that you told us you wanted and needed and really, really liked, but in reality, you were talking from your cortex. Those respondents had nothing to do with anything in the reptilian. They did not tell me anything about their subconscious or unconscious behavior. They were just telling me what I wanted to hear all the time. At this point, I want, to, I want to tell you that we do, in fact, have two heads walking around all the time. That doesn't mean that we are hypocrites or we have two personalities all the time. What, those two heads, one feeds the other, and the other controls the first. To, to demonstrate very simply, in, Sa in the Saudi culture, we have two words or two sentences we say all the time. It went global that they know that they mean nothing. Mashallah and inshallah. Inshallah is a term that in reality gives you a lot of, it, it's a promise. You're actually saying somewhat of a promise. But Nike, Arabia, looked at it from a different perspective. They said, just do it tomorrow, inshallah. So that's a problem because this is an image about an entire society. At this point, we want to decipher the nonsense of this. Dr. Chris Frith said, the way the brain works is that it hides from us most of the work that it does. Something like 90% of brain activity never reaches consciousness at all. We live our lives on autopilot without even realizing that we are. We just move around doing the same thing every day without really making any kind of effort. There's a chaotic playing field with consumer buying and marketers branding without connecting between the two. What we want to do is a completely new playbook. I'm not advocating one against the other, but I am saying we as consumers and we as marketers, we need to wake up and understand that it's a completely different playing field. Okay. The idea is to look at the human side of business rather than the analytical side of business. Marketing and branding are becoming in the core of human, uh, human behavior. And we cannot do anything without understanding this behavior. A very good example of history uh, by James McDonald's Vickery, who's an interested researcher. We all know the story. Very long time ago, in 1957, he did a research where people were looking at a movie. And in the middle of the movie, they um, put images of Coke Coca-Cola and um, popcorn. So people would go up and go buy Coca-Cola and buy popcorn. We know the story for a long time ago. Why? Because it opened an entirely different door of subliminal messages, which is a problem. The CIA came in and said, you cannot do that anymore. And there's a huge problem with it. The reality of it, five years later, James McDonald's came out and said it was a hoax. It didn't happen. It really did not happen. But thank you, James, for your lie, because he managed to tell us that there is a subconscious, there is an unconscious mind that we need to look at in a different, completely different way. Allow me to bring in somebody that I admire deeply, Sir Albert Einstein. He said that the rational mind is the humble servant. The intuitive mind is the uh, faithful gift. We have created a society today that honors the servant and completely forgot, forgot the gift. Now, Albert Einstein is way ahead of his time, completely way ahead of his time. For two reasons. Number one, he has gorgeous hair, I believe. Number two, 
He looked at things from a completely different perspective. He gave us the sense of the mysterious. That sense of the mysterious opened doors to a lot of sciences today that looks into various, various issues. From that statement, you would say, I would say that what he meant by the intuitive mind um, is the consciousness. This might sound different than what I've been saying. I have been um, looking into the unconscious, unconscious mind in a way that it's good, we need to look at it. But the gift is the conscious mind. The unconscious mind is a servant. It does what it has to do. It's exactly like a servant. If you have a maid at your house, brings you coffee to in the morning every single day, the same coffee, two sugar, black, every day. If this is what's going to happen, you will never change. But if you decided one day to get up, go to the, to the, to the kitchen and do your own coffee, you might come up with a latte or whatever. What I am uh, trying to advocate here is that Put some, something different into your life. Look into realities that are different. Use your conscious mind. We as marketers look at you as people who are masses. We don't look, as, look at you as individuals. So let's shift the argument a little bit. Let's change your mind. Let's change it today at least. Let's do something different that will allow you to do something with your conscious mind. If you're a business owner, look into the competitive field versus the creative field. Don't think, who took my share in the market? Think, how can I bake a bigger pie? Thank you very much. <laughs>